Welcome, I'm Melinda Kimami. Tonight, Northern Mediation Group wants Benway State Government to partner with the Federal Government to end the wave of clashes between farmers and herdsmen. Niger State Government begins repair of library infrastructure in secondary schools following Channel Services report on the state of the facilities. President Muhammadu Buhari leaves for Ghana on Monday to join the country's 61st Independence Anniversary celebrations. Millions of Italians head to the polls after a campaign dominated by issues of immigration and economy among the major contestants. A group of northern mediators have asked the Benway State Government to work with the federal government to find a solution to the persistent herdsman attack in the state. The group called Amadou Bello Memorial Peace Foundation made a call in Makadi, the state capital, during a mediation meeting. The former governor of Niger State, Mr. Babangida Aliu, who chaired the meeting, asked the federal government to live up to its responsibility of protecting lives and property. Since the beginning of the year, farming communities in Benue State have persistently been attacked with several residents killed, while the aggressors seemingly move unhindered to the next target. A delegation of northern leaders from the Ahmadu Bello Memorial Peace Foundation is in Makudi to mediate and find solutions to the conflict. The host governor begins by explaining the adverse effect of over 160,000 displaced persons living in unhealthy camps. 60% of these IDPs are children who would have been going to school. Some of them have already lost their exam. And this is a setback for Benway State and our generation. In the interest of this nation, in the interest of the people here, please follow what our forefathers taught us and let us do the best we can to help our people. Justice Nasir's advice of cooperating with the federal government towards solving the Benue killings does not go down well with some of the stakeholders. This is the government we voted in massively and we continue to support. So you can imagine and betrayed by your very close ally, it is most painful. Even one life that is lost, a nation, Nigeria, Benue State must be concerned. One life, not to mention lives, and not to mention a daily occurrence of an issue. So that is why we have come. We also will listen because we need to talk more to other people, other people who may not understand what is happening in Benue. For the immediate past governor of Benue State, it's time to bury the political hatchet and address the issue squarely. Enact a law that seeks to protect lives and properties of those people. If the federal government did not like the law, what they would have done is to call him and sit down with him and say, look, here and here are the provisions of the law that we think are in conflict with national interests. While a lasting solution to the killings has not been arrived at, at least the stakeholders rise from the meeting with the resolve to continue engaging other parties and organs of government until the bloodshed is ended. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuka Burtai, says the military requires the support and cooperation of all citizens in its fight against insurgency. The Army Chief, who was speaking during a visit to the Bayelsa State Governor, Siraki Dixon, in Yenugua, says the support of the people will go a long way in achieving success. The Bayelsa State Governor, who commended the efforts of the military, however cautioned them not to lose the, let their guard down in the fight against insurgency. Once again. Very good results. Chief and his team are doing a great job in very trying circumstances, but still doing a great job. And in Bayelsa, 
we encourage and we claim all those who do well. Let me also report to you that your officers and men are doing a great job in our state, contributing their quota in strengthening our security of this area and of our nation, as you know. Governor of Bielsa State, Siraki Dixon. The International Committee of the Red Cross operating in Bornu State says it has provided free surgical care to 751 patients in Midugri. The ICRC, in line with its mandate, has established a 40-bed center at the Specialist Hospital Midugri to cater for victims of insurgency. Survivors of Bornu explosions and gunshots from different parts of Bornu and Yobe State are treated for free at the center. Broken limbs, second degree injuries and internal wounds are some of the cases being treated at the ICRC center in Medigri. The center has a 40 bed ward for pediatrics and well, as well as adult male and female patients. These are victims of Boko Haram insurgents who were injured during explosion. Due to the unprecedented number of injured persons, up to 66 wounded persons were treated as outpatients in 2017 alone. At least 2,871 surgical operations have been performed at the ICRC Operation Theatre since it was established. We had uh, almost m more than 100 operations only for uh, the victims of the Konduga blast. So I think we, we uh, can prove that this is a very valuable uh, program uh, for the victims. The centre has in place two surgical teams attending to the survivors of heat and run attacks around Bruno State. According to the hospital project manager in Madugri, 5,491 blood donors have been screened at the blood bank. He says other hospitals can also assess the blood bank to save lives. We have a specialist uh, team of uh, experts, surgeons, anesthetists, specialist nurses who work around the clock to ensure that our patients are getting uh, quality surgical care. Along with the surgical, we have other support departments like the blood bank. Uh, in the blood bank, we ensure that uh, there is always uh, adequate blood available for our victims. Uh, through mobilization uh, exercises, uh, blood drive exercises, uh, and uh, we have never run short of drug uh, at the blood bank. We have always adequate uh, blood, and sometimes we can uh, be donating uh, for other hospitals or agencies. The surgical team have been conducting outreach activities, screening IDPs living in host communities to ensure they have access to surgical care. Barely a month after Channel's television reported about the terrible state of library facilities in some public secondary schools in Niger State, an infrastructure overhaul is set to begin in the affected institutions. Governor Sani Belo visited one of the affected schools to look at what needs to be done and promised to carry out a total makeover as soon as the state's 2018 budget is passed. In February this year, Channel Television ran a story on the poor state of the library facilities in public secondary schools in Niger State, including Amadou Bahago Secondary School, Mina. Apparently, it caught the attention of Governor Sani Bello, who barely a month after is visiting the school for the first time since assuming office to see things for himself. The governor is greeted by the sight of students living in unbelievably dilapidated hostels, many of them having to sleep in beds without mattresses. The visit of the governor offers an opportunity for them to share their challenges. This school did not have friends. We do not have enough water in this school. The children and the students used to walk around and look for water and we don't know maybe something will happen to them. Please, we need water. And thirdly, it's about the dining. So we need good food. We do not have more food in the school. The hostel is no more good. We need, we need good hostel and the good fund because the school will not have more light in our. For Governor Bello, these problems are already marked for solutions. All the modern schools, they don't use the Naya in abandoned. When was the last time this school saw a renovation? In any case, your school will be renovated every day. It's, 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 it's common. 
Established in 1956, Ahmadu Bahago Secondary School Mina has only been partially renovated once in 62 years. If the state government keeps its promise of renovating the school, it might help to restore its glory days. From education, we talk agriculture now. The Castina state government is appealing to farmers to plant more trees by taking advantage of the opportunities presented by the European Union's intervention. The Director for Forestry, Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Saminu Mohammed, made the appeal during the distribution of fertilizer to farmers in the state. The free incentives distribution activity sponsored by the European Union is to complement the efforts of the state government and support irrigation farmers who plant seedlings in their respective communities. The Director of Forestry, Ministry of Agriculture, wants the beneficiaries to make optimal use of the commodities distributed and also embark on tree planting in their communities. I also wish to seize this opportunity to impose the general public to plant more trees and protect them to maturity with a view to protect our environment from desertification, soil erosion and climate change effects. Also speaking at the occasion, the Director for Drought and Desertification Control in the Ministry of Environment advises irrigation farmers to utilize the products given to them to improve their farming and other drought control activities. Each farmer will get a bag of fertilizer, a cook stove, a bottle of insecticide, and a watering can, which I believe they will utilize this input for their farming practices as well as the other drought control activity. So it's very encouraging. So I call on our farmers that they should give all the necessary cooperation to this program. The project manager of improving the fuel wood balance in the Sinner State believes that the program would help the rural populace fight the negative effects of climate change and environmental degradation. We expect that at the end of the day, farmers would use it effectively. The issue is about sustainability of uh, uh, forestation. It's also about helping the rural populace to fight the negative effect of the climate change and also to uh, help control the environment. By paraventure also improved the income of the rural populace and the livelihood. One of the beneficiaries is appreciative of the gesture and hopes to utilize it effectively to enhance his farming capacity. If the advocacy on tree planting in the state is sustained, as well as the fight against desertification, soil erosion and environmental degradation, these will radically improve the livelihood of farmers and enhance internally generated revenue in the state. President Muhammad Buhari will be heading to Accra tomorrow to attend Ghana's 61st Independence Anniversary celebration on Tuesday. According to the presidential spokesman, Mr. Femi Adishino, President Buhari is the only foreign leader attending the event and he's the special guest of honor. The president will use the opportunity to highlight the long-standing relationship between both nations and talk about Nigeria's commitment to improving those ties. The president will be tra traveling alongside the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Oyema, and the National Security Advisor, Mr. Babagana Mungunu. They are expected back in the country immediately after the celebrations.